Let's chat about Eros and Psyche. This story really does have everything that you could possibly want. It's got drama, it's got love, it's got sex, it's got betrayal, it's got rich fucking hot winged men who stay in a beautiful Grecian palace. There is not anything that this story doesn't have. Hi, I'm Christy. Welcome to Weird and Witchy Shit, a place for, well, Weird and Witchy Shit. Here we talk about everything from the magic of yoga, rituals, tarot, crystals, astrology, self-love, mental health, spiritual stuff, spooky things and anything of the mystical variety. So if that sounds like the kind of shit you're into, then you're in the right place my friend. Welcome to the coven. So Eros is more popularly known by his Roman name Cupid and is normally depicted as a winged child holding a bow and arrow or like a wee cherub. Often Cupid is depicted as being blindfolded. This is to symbolise the unexpected and unpredictableness of falling in love. But in Greek mythology, Eros is not a little child. He is a hot, muscular god of desire, erotic love and physical attraction and he was actually the protector of gay male love as well. It's said that whoever Eros pierced with his arrow, wink wink, would fall into a deep and unshakable love with the first thing that they laid eyes on. So there are many different versions of who Eros's parents are. I'm going to go with the version where his mother is Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, and his father is Ares, who is actually the god of the spirit of battle, but is more commonly known as the god of war. I think it just makes sense that Aphrodite and Ares would be Eros' parents because you've got like both sides of love there, like you've got like the beautiful, romantic, lovely side and then you've got like the painful battlefield side as well so in my head that just makes a lot of sense. So Psyche was a mortal girl and she was the daughter of a king and a queen. I don't know of where but I guess that technically makes her a princess. I also don't know the king and queen's name so for the sake of storytelling let's call them King James and Queen Betty. She also had two sisters, again I don't know their names but for the story let's call them August and Ines. In Greek the word psyche means soul so this story may or may not be interpreted as the story of physical, passionate love, meeting the soul, which I believe is really what we are experiencing on earth, a soul experiencing the physical world. Psyche is said to have been so beautiful with a beauty so radiant that rivaled even that of the gods and one god in particular, Aphrodite. Aphrodite was super hot and super jealous so when word got back to her that some of her loyal followers were having their head turned by this mortal girl, she was not happy to see to say the least. And this is how it came about that Aphrodite asked a favour of her son Eros. Might have been a favour, might have been a demand, either way. She tells Eros that he should go into the field and find a pig the biggest, ugliest, smelliest, hairiest pig, take the pig to Psyche, shoot her with one of his arrows and make sure that the pig is the first thing that she sees when she opens her eyes. Sometimes in the story it's a monster, not a pig, but it it doesn't really matter. So later that night, Eros went to the kingdom where Psyche lived and very carefully with the pig under his arm, crept his way into her bedroom window. When Eros sees Psyche lying in her bed so peaceful and so beautiful, he becomes mesmerised by her beauty and can't take his eyes off her. But still, he wants to fulfil his mother's wishes, so reaching behind him to get his arrow from his quiver, still unable to look away from the beautiful girl and obviously very distracted, he accidentally grazes his own skin with the arrow. Instantly, he falls truly, madly, 
deeply in love with Psyche. So here Eros could have shot Psyche with his arrow but his love for her was so pure that he didn't want to take away her free will and didn't want her to be just in love with him because he made her in love with him. So he darted back out the window unsure if he left the pig slash monster. Free pig hopefully. King James and Queen Betty had actually been becoming increasingly worried about Psyche because unlike their other two daughters August and Ines, she was yet to find herself a husband. So they decided to take a trip to visit the Oracle Apollo to see what their daughter's fate would be. Would she ever find a husband or would she be destined to spinsterhood forever? The oracle told them that the gods were angry with them and that they had to give Psyche as sacrifice and that the only way they would be able to appease the gods would be if they took their daughter to the tallest mountain and left her there. This is where she would be taken away by a force so great that even the gods feared it. And if the king and queen did not agree to this, then a plague would fall over their kingdom, leaving the people of their kingdom to either die or to live in despair, and it would be all their fault. So the king and queen took the oracle Apollo's advice, and they took Psyche up to the very top of the tallest mountain, sorrowfully said their goodbyes and left her there to be taken. While Psyche sat there awaiting her fate and probably thinking that whatever happened to her was better than being married to someone that she can't fucking stand, just like her sisters were, um, she started to feel something guiding her towards the edge of the cliff and then a huge gust of wind lifted her from the earth and into the air. This was Zephyr, aka the West Wind. So she travelled for some time sailing on this wind until eventually she arrived at a grand palace. The outside of the palace was nothing like Psyche had ever seen before, like something straight out of a fairy tale. The outside was beautiful but the inside was spectacular. There was marble flooring, gold pillars, silk tapestries, everything about the place was just so grand and so luxurious. At this palace Psyche was greeted by many servants, oh might I add, invisible servants, but they were all friendly nonetheless. They told Psyche that the palace was now her home and that she would be waited on hand and foot. She'd eat the finest foods, drink the nicest wines, listen to the best music. Basically, she would never ever want for anything ever again. Every day is a spa day now in Psyche's life. She also had a giant romantically decorated bedroom with the biggest comfiest bed and a huge copper bathtub and this would be the thing that I would be most excited about and because it had been such a long day and a very weird day I'm sure Psyche decided that she was going to go for a bath and go to bed which honestly literally me after doing the bare minimum Later that night, Psyche was awoken with someone in her bed and, long story short, they end up making love. She can't see who this is but she can feel him and she can tell that he is hot and not only that, he's pretty good in bed. Almost as if this were some kind of god of erotic or physical love. And by the next morning, she woke up, her bed was empty and he was gone. So this went on for some time and Psyche would spend her days living this luxurious lifestyle and every evening she would be visited by her mystery lover. Every morning he would once again be gone. Over time their passion for one another grew into something a lot deeper and although Psyche never actually got to see this man, it didn't really matter because she fell in love with who he was as a person and their connection was so deep beyond looks that she didn't really care. 
So since they were having so much sex and as we've spoke about here before, the fertility rates in ancient Greece are fucking sky high. Sometimes people can just be rained on and fall pregnant. So it was obviously inevitable that Psyche was going to fall pregnant. With this pregnancy, Psyche did start to become a lot more curious about the identity of the man who she was having a baby with and now married to. But all her requests for him to reveal himself to her were all denied. He would tell her that if she truly did love him, then his looks shouldn't matter at all. And that she should respect his wishes to remain anonymous. Psyche was enjoying her life in the palace because, you know, she was in love and she had a baby on the way. And all her physical needs were being met in more than one way. But she did start to become a lot more lonely and this beautiful palace started to seem a lot more like a beautiful prison than a home. She missed her family a lot and she wanted them to know that she was okay and that she hadn't been took away by some horrible monster but she was in fact living a great life and she was living with a man that she loved deeply. So her mystery lover obviously didn't want her to be miserable so he told her that if it really did mean that much to her then she could have her sisters come and visit. So they sent for Zephyr the West Wind to come and collect Psyche take her back to her kingdom, get her sisters and bring them over to come and visit the palace. And of course her two sisters were immensely impressed by the palace and in seeing that Psyche was so happy and that she hadn't been taken away or held captive or killed instead of being really happy for her, they were really jealous of her. In fact they'd always been really jealous of Psyche because she was the most beautiful one and the most talented one and this was just kind of the cherry on top of the cake. They thought that finally she was going to be out their way, something bad happening to her but now they've found out that she's actually living a really great life. They're not happy for their sister at all. So August and Inez being the jealous little bitches that they are, they start questioning Psyche about her new husband and she tells them that he is a beautiful young man who treats her well. He hunts a lot during the day and in the evening he comes home and they have great sex. What else is there to say? But August and Ines are determined to poke holes in this story. So they're pressing Psyche to find out who this guy is and what he really looks like and she obviously can't tell them this because she doesn't know and when they realise this they are elated. Bingo we found like the perfect flaw to like chip away at. So they both tell her but Psyche don't you remember that the oracle Apollo says that you were going to be taken away by a force so horrible that even the gods fear it. So this must be a monster that has you. This isn't a man who's in love with you. This is a monster. And the reason that he won't show you his face is because when you see his face, you'll realise this. And at first Psyche's like, no, I know who he is as a person. I know that he has a good heart. But the seed of doubt is already planted. So her sisters tell her that later that night, after they've made love and her husband falls asleep, she should get herself a lantern and a knife. A lantern to look at his face in the dark and a knife in case it is a horrible monster and she has to kill him and escape. So Zephyr takes the sisters home and later that night as usual Psyche and her husband make love and he falls asleep. So she's lying there in bed and she's thinking about all the things that her sister said and the more she thinks about it, the more weird it does actually start to seem to her that she's literally never seen this man who she's having a baby with. There's no two ways about it. It's weird. So she does exactly what was suggested from her nightstand. She takes her lantern, she takes a knife, crept over to her husband's side of the bed and peered down at him. When the light shone on his face, it was not the face of a hideous monster, 
but it was the face of the most beautiful man she'd ever seen in her life. Coming from the man's muscular shoulders, she saw two heavenly white wings and next to him a bow and arrow. And she knew right away that this was the god Eros. In amazement and filled with so much love in that moment, she knelt down to kiss him on the face. But as she did, hot oil from her lantern dripped down and onto Eros's skin. Startled, he woke up and the first thing he sees looking back at him is Psyche holding a knife. And before she can even be like, oh my god, I swear it's like not what it looks like, he jumps up out of bed, leaps out the window and flies away. As soon as he departs, the palace starts to crumble around Psyche and she is left standing in the ruins of what was once her beautiful home. Psyche fell into a deep depression and she did actually consider taking her own life as she felt like she would never be happy again. But... It just so happens that on her way to do this, she comes across the god Pan who talks her out of it. He instead suggests that instead of killing herself, why doesn't she seek revenge instead? I love this chaotic energy and so did Psyche. So off she went back home to the kingdom to meet with her sisters. The first sister that she meets with is August and she tells her that she took her advice to look at the man and it wasn't a monster but it was in fact the god Eros. She told her that the reason that she was back home is because she had been absolutely heartbroken because once she discovered it was Eros, he actually told her that he wasn't in love with her. He was never in love with her and all of this was a huge big ploy to get with her sister August. The August was the more beautiful sister, August was the one who had his heart and August was the one that he really wanted to be with. August of course is delighted. Psyche says that she had been sent to tell August this information and that if she wanted to be with Eros, she was to climb to the top of the highest mountain just as Psyche once had and it is there that Zephyr, the west wind, would carry her to her new home and her new lover. So right away, August runs to the top of this mountain. She has a husband, but who fucking cares? I don't even think that she thought twice about him in this moment. So when she gets to the top of the mountain, she leaps off the edge, falling into the safety of Zephyr. Only Zephyr wasn't there. So instead of falling into the safety of the west wind, August fell to her death. Psyche then goes to meet with her other sister, Ines who has the same fate as August. Eros, being the little mummy's boy that he is, went running straight to Aphrodite and he told her everything about how he failed in his mission for her, how he'd fallen in love with Psyche and how she'd betrayed him. Aphrodite is, of course, furious. She's annoyed with her son, but even more so, she is annoyed with Psyche. She already didn't like her, so this was just a great excuse to punish her. Aphrodite summons Psyche to her and as punishment she assigns her with four impossible tasks. For the first task, Aphrodite locks Psyche in a room in a tall tower surrounded by mounds and mounds of grains of rice, pulses, seeds, etc. And she told her, knowing that it would be impossible to do, do so, that she had to separate all of these into their own separate little bundles. Psyche had literally given up before she already started because she knew that this would be impossible. There's no way that she could do this all on her own. But to her amazement, she noticed that the grains and seeds and pulses started moving about on their own, maybe but they actually weren't moving on their own. What it actually was, was an army of ants who were helping her with the task. So in the morning, much to Aphrodite's dismay, the task had been completed. 
for the second task, Aphrodite asked Psyche to bring her some of the golden fleece from the rams of the sun. Now, the rams of the sun are fucking mental, not friendly, headbutting, aggressive, crazy. They bite, they trample, they're vicious. This time the ants don't come to help her but it's the reeds from the river that whisper to Psyche that if she waits until nightfall the rams will leave the field as they do every single night and their fleece will get caught in the brambles on the way and she can go and collect the golden fleece from the brambles and take that to Aphrodite and complete her mission. So she does exactly that and she takes back the golden fleece to Aphrodite. Third task is even more dangerous than the last one. Psyche is told to fill up a jug of water from the river Styx. So the river Styx is treacherous and deathly for any mortal to go near. This is the river that separates the living from the dead and is what is crossed over to get into the underworld. And just to add a little bit of extra fear, it's guarded by snakes and other deadly and mythical creatures. So Psyche knows if she tries to collect water from this jug, like she is going to die, no doubt about it. So it's actually Zeus that helps her out this time, never one to see a young, beautiful girl in distress and not insert himself into that drama. Zeus sends down one of his egos to collect some water from the river Styx for Psyche to give to Aphrodite. So she has completed her third impossible task. The fourth and final task was the most deadly one of them all. Aphrodite handed Psyche a box and told her that she was to go down into the underworld and have Queen Persephone give her some of her special beauty cream. Place it in the box and then give it back to her. Psyche knew for sure that this was impossible because there is no way that a mortal can just go wandering into the underworld, ask Persephone for some of her beauty cream and walk back out. So Psyche feels completely defeated and obviously she's still heartbroken so she climbs to the top of a tower and is about to throw herself off when the tower actually speaks to her. The tower tells her that she can go to the underworld she is capable and he will tell her how. So the tower tells her that she will have to take two coins with her, one to pay the ferryman to take her over the river Styx and one to pay the ferryman to take her back out of the underworld again. She would also need to bring two cakes to distract Cerberus, the three-headed dog, one for going into the underworld and one for going out of the underworld. He also warned her that while in the underworld she will be asked three times by three different people if she can help them and she has to tell them no she will not help them. If she stops and agrees to help them she will die. And finally under absolutely no circumstances is she to open that box. This is the most important rule. So against the odds and following the tower's advice, Psyche actually makes it to the underworld. She pays the ferryman, distracts Cerberus, says no to helping the three people and now all she's left to do is to ask Persephone for some of her beauty cream. And Persephone is actually pretty warm and welcoming to her and she agrees that she will give her some of this beauty cream for Aphrodite. So Persephone takes the box, puts the beauty inside, hands it back to Psyche and Psyche's on her way. But before Psyche can get back to Aphrodite, she is feeling like shit. She's tired, she's pregnant, she's lost the love of her life, she's quite literally been to hell and back and she feels like she could use a little beauty cream pick-me-up. Bad idea. So when Psyche opens the box, the beauty she is met with is the beauty of death. Over this time, while Persephone's doing all this shit, Eros and his bruised ego had finally healed. He had some time to reconsider and decided that he really missed and really loved his wife very much and wanted to be back with her. So when he sees her laying on the ground, he was devastated. So he opens his wings, swoops down to earth and on her lips, 
gave her true love's kiss, which awoke her from her beauty sleep. The couple wanted to be together, they were over the drama, they were over the secrets, they were over the whole mother-in-law from hell thing, they just wanted to spend eternity with the one that they loved. So Eros took Psyche up to Mount Olympus and called a meeting with the gods where he requested that Psyche be granted immortality so that she could be with him forever. And he also begged his mother that she would accept Psyche as one of their own. It was then that Zeus told Aphrodite that she never needed to worry about Psyche in the first place because no one, no matter how beautiful, mortal or immortal, could ever take the place of the great Aphrodite. And this actually like softened Aphrodite a little bit and she was like, yeah, actually, like I do know that, like you're so fucking right, Zeus. So Aphrodite welcomed Psyche and agreed to stop trying to kill her all the time. And Zeus must have been feeling pretty generous because he says that yes, he would grant her with immortality. Maybe he was just really impressed at all the missions that she managed to accomplish as well. Uh, He also granted Psyche with some beautiful butterfly wings so that her and her lover could always fly together. And this is where Psyche becomes goddess of the soul. And just to add to the happy ending, Psyche gave birth to her and Eros's child, a daughter named Hedone, who is the goddess of pleasure, enjoyment and delight. And that is the story of Eros and Psyche. If you have enjoyed this story, I am doing a little series of six Greek mythology stories, so I'm sure you'll like them as well. And I also have some other Greek mythology stories on my channel already. And I will hopefully see you in another one. Bye. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can get me on Instagram at Christie's underscore coven. That's K-R-I-S-T-Y-S underscore coven. You can also find me on YouTube at Christie's Coven, where I post a lot of free yoga classes and shit like that. And I'd love to have you join because it's not a coven if it's just me. And until next time, bye!